So when we talk about ground reaction forces in the golf swing, there's a lot of variability in what players do. Uh, so different players will do a lot of different things when it comes to how they use the ground to create their golf swings. One pretty common consistency between all good players is the sequence in which they use the ground reaction forces. I believe there's only one player that we've measured that has consistently not used this sequence of ground force, and that would be Matt Kuchar. Uh, still has had a pretty good career and can do that. Um, but everybody else that we've measured, every other good golfer that we've measured has used this sequence. And so what we've discovered is the sequence in which uh, the ground reaction forces are used or the ground reaction's peak in the golf swing is as we get to the top of the backswing, people produce their maximum horizontal force. And so that's the force where they're pushing away from the target and their pelvis is being driven towards the target. So that is the one that peaks first. And then as they get, as that horizontal force starts to come down, then they get into their rotational force or their torque. So the second force in the kinetic sequence is torque. And the third force in the kinetic sequence as they start to rotate is gonna be vertical. And so 99.9% .9 of good golfers create a kinetic sequence of horizontal torque, then vertical force, and it's pretty easy to make a golf swing looking motion uh, using that sequence. So the first sequence, or the first force in the kinetic sequence as we get to the top is that horizontal force. And people who are very dominant in horizontal forces, we term it to be, to be more of a glider. So they get that horizontal movement of their pelvis uh, through the golf swing. Um, and what we found, we did a big study uh, partnering with the guys at Ping and Phoenix, and we found that people who are more horizontal swingers or produce more horizontal force tend to have more inside out club pass or swing directions. And so you can see that as I get moving horizontally and my pelvis shifts forward, generally that drops the club to the inside and creates more of a horizontal or an in to out club path. And so if you have golfers that are struggling kind of more with an over the top kind of leftward swing direction, or leftward path, uh, we can try to introduce a little bit more horizontal force to get them to drop that club to the inside. Also, if you have golfers, better golfers that are struggling with a very inside out club path and a lot of hooks, generally they have very high um, horizontal forces and turning down that horizontal force to decrease that uh, swing direction or path out to the right could be very important. And so generally high horizontal forces are correlated with more in to out club pass. So obviously turning down the horizontal force could make the club go a little less to the right uh, and turning up the horizontal force could make the club go a little more to the right. So the second force in the kinetic sequence is our torque force. And in a lot of work we, done, we did with Ping several years ago and the guys in Phoenix, uh, we discovered that there's a high correlation between golfers who are dominant in producing torque and a leftward or a more out to in path or swing direction. And so you can see as I would get more rotational and I learned to push my left foot towards the golf ball and produce that reaction force that turns me through it, you can see that if my arms come through with that, there's more tendency for them to, to be moving to the left or out to in. And so uh, if you have a golfer who really struggles with an in to out swing direction or swing or path, hitting some blocks and hooks, teaching them to create more torque and get that uh, lower body clearing or rotating better through impact gives them a little more space for their hands so they don't have to fly out to the right and the hands in the club can kind of turn the corner a little bit better and create a more leftward swing direction. So um, generally they're kind of a trade-off horizontal force and torque. As I get more horizontal, I go more out to the right or in to out. As I get more torque, I go more out to in or to the left. And uh, playing with those two things or dialing those things for each player uh, can be pretty important. So the last force in the kinetic sequence is our vertical force and this is a force that I think we've been learning a lot about recently with the uh, more use of ground reaction force plates in golf instruction. Uh, a lot of golfers on the PGA Tour now you'll see their feet almost leave the ground and on the LPGA Tour uh, before they hit the ball and that is effective use of vertical forces. Um, we do find though that your feet do not have to leave the ground for you to use a lot of vertical force. There's a lot of players where the foot stays on the ground but there's still a significant amount of vertical force happening there. Uh, one thing we find is the vertical force is very correlated to uh, angle of attack. And so if I don't have a whole lot of vertical force, I'm gonna get a more downward angle of attack. That's generally why we see lower or vertical forces with iron swings than we do with drivers. Uh, and then when I tee the ball up and I wanna have a more upward angle of attack, it would make sense for me to produce more vertical force and get my center of mass coming up more. That's gonna cause the club to rise up 
and hit the ball more at an upward uh, angle of attack. So a more negative or downward angle of attack would be less for vertical forces. And so if you have somebody who has a very downward angle of attack, maybe catching a lot of balls fat to shallow them out and get that angle of attack a little shallower, uh, we could use more vertical forces. Um, and also with driver, generally it's advantageous to get a more upward angle of attack on the golf ball. So adding a little bit of vertical force in there could help get a more positive or upward angle of attack on the golf ball.